Good evening, everyone. Stand up and tell me if you love my Jesus. Stand up and tell me if you love my Lord. I want to know if you love my Jesus. I want to know if you love my Lord. Stand up and tell me if you love my Jesus. Stand up and tell me if you love my Lord.
treasures of sin. Oh, I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Oh, I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. stand for a few songs. bow our heads of prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we give you thanks tonight for your grace and your mercies towards us. We give you thanks, dear Lord, that you have brought us here on this spot of ground, dear Lord, to worship and to adore your matchless name, because indeed, Lord, you are worthy to be praised. The second night, dear God, of our Keys to Happiness evangelistic series, and Lord, we pray tonight, dear Lord, that as we come to give you praise and to lift you up, you will draw all men unto you. Tonight we present ourselves, dear God, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We pray, dear Lord, that you will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Be with each and every one that comes on this compound, dear Lord. May our hearts be blessed and may we be closer drawn to you. We pray for our evangelist in a mighty and special way. May you open his understanding. May you endow him, dear God, with power from on high. And may as you speak your words to your people, our hearts will be open and will be closer drawn to you. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you have done for us and for what you're about to do. For we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Pursuit of Happiness series. It is good to be here under the tent. Last evening, we had a wonderful time, and this evening is even going to be greater as we listen to the man of God, Dr. Smith. This evening, I welcome you wholeheartedly. If you're coming from the east or the west, if you're coming for the, from the north or the south, welcome, welcome, welcome. And may you receive the blessings you come seeking after. Amen. Everybody smile, 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 ever
Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. I love that feel that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people, I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. It's so nice to see all the happy faces, praising God in the heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a joy between the Lord and I. Keep falling in love with him. Over and over and over and over. Check. Good night, everyone. Glad to join with everyone else in welcoming you to the second night of our crusade. I pray that you have been blessed so far and you need to be blessed. This song is just a reminder that no matter what you're going through, that once you put your trust in Jesus, that he is guaranteeing you that he will bring you through. I pray that you're blessed by the words of this song.
Good night, everybody. We will come back to it while they're looking for the track. All right. But this evening, we, we believe in family. Amen? And God believes in family. Amen? And so God made families. Uh, tonight, our family life nugget is simply forgiveness. Amen? Forgiveness. Uh, some of the hardest people for us to forgive are the people in our own homes. Yes? Our family members. Yes? Our sister, brother, uh, parents, and even spouse. Yes? And so the important thing tonight is the scripture says, Ephesians 4, verse 32, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. And so I want you to understand that if you're going to move forward in your family life, if you're going to move forward as, as a family and as a unit, you will need to forgive. Yes? At times we hurt each other. At times we say things that we don't mean. Or, or we say things in anger at each other, you know. And what happens is that we hurt each other. But if we are going to move forward, and if we are going to see the face of God and to live in his presence forever, it will mean that we have to forgive each other. Jesus said, if you don't forgive each other, then neither will he, as your father, forgive you. Yes? And so tonight we are encouraging everybody to let us learn to forgive. It's not easy. It's not easy. But let us learn to forgive. Let us pray and ask God to give us the strength to forgive, to let go. Because when you let go, what it means is that you will sleep better at night. Amen? You'll be able to sleep better, have a good night's rest. It will mean you will be healthier. Research, researchers found that people who don't forgive are less healthy than those who forgive. In fact, the research even pointed out that cancer patients, people with cancer, died quicker because they were holding on to a grudge and, and hurt and, and bitterness and so forth. While those who, who let go were able to live a little longer. Yes? And so I want to encourage you tonight. It may not be easy. Write a letter of forgiveness. Let the other person know. And, and the, an important thing about forgiveness is that it doesn't mean that you have to wait for the other person to come forward. The other person wronged you. Yes, you were hurt. Yes, the person said something or did something that you didn't like. Whatever it is, maybe they really hurt you. Forgiveness is not dependent on the other person. It simply means you make a decision, I will forgive you. I have forgiven you. I want to encourage you tonight, when you go home, write a letter to somebody, maybe a WhatsApp note. Let the person know that you have forgiven them. And what will happen is that you will free yourself you will allow yourself to be able to be healthier and happier because you would have forgiven. May God help us to forgive. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. God has truly blessed us. And I believe it's our turn now to be a blessing to someone else. Tonight, we're going to invite you to take your monies out of your pockets and be a blessing to someone. Your dollar will help to spread the gospel. And that is what we are, we are all about here tonight. May I invite the praise team to join me? as you take your dollars out. I'm gonna invite you to stand just now so that we can pray. And while we find that money, 
please stand and just assume a posture of reverence as we pray. Great God in heaven, we are indeed thankful that you continue to bless us. You continue to provide for us. And, oh God, you have always looked out for us. And so now it is our turn to look out for our brothers and sisters. And so we ask you now to bless whatever will be collected. Stretch it, make it good, make it wonderful, so that your word will reach far and wide and souls will be born for your kingdom, is our asking through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One second. Alright, we're gonna sing this song. I want you to sing along with me. It's entitled God on the Mountain. I hope the musicians know it and can help us out. It goes, Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you got peace of mind. Like you never known, but things change when you're down in the valley, but don't lose faith, because you're never alone, for the God Talk of faith when you're up on the mountain, but talk comes so easy when life's at its best, but now it's down in the valley of trials and temptations. That's when your faith is really to the test for the God on the mountain he is still good in the valley when things go wrong he'll make them right and the God of the good times he is still good in God on the mountain, he's still good in the valley, when things go wrong, he'll make them right, and the 
God of the good times. He is the God in the bad times. The God of the day is the God in the night. And the God of the good times, He is still God in the bad times. The God of the day. It's time for our quiz. But before we get into our quiz, I just want to remind you that if you are here and you are in need of special prayer, that we have a prayer team at the back that's waiting for you. So don't worry about what anybody will say. Just make your way to the back and we have our team that is ready and waiting to pray with and for you. So quick question, everybody has a paper? If you need a paper, just wave your hand. The ushers will come real quick to give you a pen and paper. If you have a paper and if you need a paper, just wave your hand real quick and the ushers will come and give you a paper. Now if you're joining us online, you too can participate in our quiz because at this time I am going to ask our chat administrators just to drop the link in the chat so if you're here and you want to use the form, you can go over to the YouTube page, go in the chat, and you can click on it. So on your papers, ensure you have your name. If you are a visitor, you just need to write a V and your telephone number. If you are an Adventist, all you have to do is just write an A, and you're going to number your paper one, two, three, four, five. And then for each question that is asked, all you have to do is write T, if it's true, or F if it's false. Everybody got that? Are you ready? All right, so our first question, I promise you, it's going to be very easy. Number one, the title of last night's sermon was In Pursuit of Happiness. The title of last night's sermon was In Pursuit of Happiness. T for true, F for false. Number two, Jesus kept bad company when he was here on earth. Jesus kept bad company when he was here on earth. Number three, God is in the salvation business, not the condemnation business. Number three, God is in the salvation business, not the condemnation business. Number four, People have more and are happier now than they were before. People have more and are happier now than they were before. True or false? T for true, F for false. And the final question. Happiness is a goal reached and not the result of a lifestyle. Happiness is a goal reached and not the result of a lifestyle. Have a wonderful night. Drop your papers in the buckets with the ushers. And for those who are online, I will check the time. We won't be accepting any answers after 7.46 p.m. Good night. Amen. 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 All right. The privilege is mine tonight to introduce to us our speaker, the man of God, Dr. Smith. Amen. 
We're happy that he has come all the way from Mandible to be here with us. He has served for over 35 years as a pastor and director. Amen? And we're happy to know tonight that our vice president for the Jamaica Union has consented to do this evangelistic series. He's a family man, a married man with four daughters, and he's passionate for ministry, passionate for the gospel. Before this mighty man of God comes tonight to share the word of God, we will have our meditation song by Sister Yearwood. Good night, church. I will be ministering in song four days late. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. Let's just sit without your help. He will not last. Mary and Martha washed their brother down. They're waiting for Jesus. He did not come, they wondered why. The death watch was over, very for day. Somebody said, he'll soon be here, the Lord's on his way. Martha ran to him. She cried, Lord, if you were here, you could have healed him. He'll still be alive. But John 4 days late, and all hope is gone. Lord, we don't understand why you wait. Show me the way. But she said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been there for a day. The great storm will throw back. And then Jesus cried. Let us come forth this summer.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's a lady with a talent for the glory of God. What do you say? Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, Christian friends. Did you have a good day today? If your day wasn't good and you got that music, it has to be good. Come on, say amen. amen. Thank you so much. I'm always blessed, always inspired when I see God's children using their talents to glorify our Father in heaven. Thank you again, Sister Yearwood, and may God bless you. May he continue to use you, use all our members as they use their talent for the glory and the honor of Almighty God. Once again, it is a joy to see each of you. I want to say a very special welcome to each of you. I join the team in extending welcome. It is good to see you out on Monday night. It's good to see you on Monday night. Now, as I look at some of you, I recognize that some of you have not smiled since morning. You are here at the Keys to Happiness Evangelistic Impact. And this is a place where God's children are happy, where God's children are rejoicing. So can I hear you say amen? amen. I'd like you to just turn to the person beside you. I want you to just smile with the person and say, I'm happy to be sitting beside you. Come on, come on. I, I, and, and please, please, give it a smile. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is the keys to happiness. And we are here to praise the Lord. I said, we are here to praise the Lord. I said, we are here to praise the Lord. Come on, say amen. amen. And so as we come each night, and I want to say thanks to all the individuals uh, who participated earlier for the work that they have done. We thank you so much. Let me just share a few, a few things with you before I get into the message for this evening. Very special message that the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you. Uh, it is that evening, and I want to thank Pastor Ferguson, Pastor Dane Ferguson, for the presentation he did in Family Life. Just want to remind you that we have special features, and on uh, Sunday evening, we have health, and Monday's family. Tuesday, we come back with health because we want you to be healthy, happy, and holy. And so we have held on Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be a prayer night. And we are going to be praying. And we are inviting you to bring all your friends and come together. Because we are going to be praying under this tent. What do you say? And so it's going to be a very special power uh, night as we lift up our petitions to God. And we are confident that God hears and he answers prayer. And so that is... Uh, Wednesday night and then Thursday night it's youth empowerment session and we're inviting you to bring all your friends bring all the young people all our youth and of course it is approaching the weekend the holiday and we are coming together to worship and to fellowship so please bear that in mind they I have some gifts that I want to give out this evening I have I want to give to a, a young boy I want to give a boy I want to give a boy is there a uh, <laughs> two of them raised their hand. All right. I am always happy to give up. <laughs> All right. I promise you another night. But I'm going to give this one. God bless you. And I hope that you will enjoy it. I'm going to share with you tonight that I actually learned to read by, from the Bible. I learned to read from the Bible. And uh, it has been a tremendous blessing to my soul. And uh, I'm always happy when individuals are reading the Bible, and thank you so much. Uh, that's, for, that's for you. I want to give to an adult. Uh, I'm going to ask you, Elder McCullough, come and take this Bible, and I want you to give it to, an, I want you to, give it to uh, 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 one of my visitors. I want you to give it to one of my, my visitors. I want you to give it to one of my visitors. There's a gentleman sitting right here before me. I'm going to ask you to make sure you get right there. Please give it to that gentleman. Please give it to one, that gentleman. Uh, is there an usher? I want one of my ushers, uh, female ushers. Uh, come for me quickly. 
I want you to go down, and since I give that gentleman, I don't want anybody to accuse me of being biased. Uh, uh, so I'm going to ask you to go over that side, and please find one of my sisters, one of my visiting sisters, and give, them, give her that Bible. Please. One of my visiting sisters. Ah. All right. So sometime, tomorrow night, somebody has to go a little further down. Let me see the hands of all those of, who are visiting tonight. You're visiting with us tonight. You're here tonight. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And by the way, did you register your, your visitors? Remember, remember that we have a very special tablet, electronic gadget, that will be given at the end of the week to the person who has invited the most visitors. So please make sure that you register. Uh, the ushers, when you come in the night, make sure you register. And uh, I was told that one of the uh, gadgets uh, came in today all the way from New York. So you won't want to uh, miss that. And I want to thank my friends and uh, relatives and those of you who are watching online, sharing with us in this series. We are so delighted and excited to have you in the various churches through the YouTube page of the various churches and those of you who are joining us we are delighted to have you and I just want to remind those of you in the audience you have been very good last night and you're looking good tonight just make sure that you smile so that those who are watching know that yes something good is happening under this tent what do you say I'm told that Pastor Stewart one of our pastors is here delighted to have you just like to remind you that tonight Tonight, very special message, very special message lined up for tonight, and the topic for tonight is God's GPS, God's GPS. Tomorrow night, I have a very humorous topic that you don't want to miss. Uh, tomorrow night, it is the mysterious rock stone, the mysterious rock stone. And then on Wednesday night, on the Jesus Satisfies. And Thursday night, Signs of the Times. Friday night will be rest night. But I want to extend an early invitation to all of you to come by here this coming Saturday. Because we are going to be having a wonderful time under this tent. We are going to be lifting up Jesus. Is somebody listening to me? We are going to be having a great time. And so we are inviting you to come, all of Mona, all of Papine, all of Augustown and Hope and Garden Town, come down here because we are going to be lifting up Jesus and we know that great things will be happening here under the tent. So plan to be here and the topic for Saturday will be leave her alone, leave her alone. So we invite you to come and let's have a wonderful time. Remember, bring your friends. And again, very happy to see you here tonight. God's GPS is the title of our message. Bow your heads with me and whisper a prayer. Bow your heads and let us pray. Our loving Father and our God, you're great and awesome. You're merciful and kind. You're compassionate. We are here in your presence this evening because of the goodness and the mercies of God. And for this we praise your name. Here are your children. Many of them have been to work today. Some of them are tired. But their desire to fellowship with you, to worship you, has overridden their tiredness. And so they have come to hear a word from you, O God. Draw near now, Heavenly Father. Speak to each heart. Touch my lips. Cause your words to go forth tonight with power and clarity. May there be no stumbling block. May there be no hindrance. But, oh God, I pray tonight that the Spirit of God will take the words. Plant it deep down in our hearts. Bring about conviction and conversion. And draw all of us close to you. Hear our prayer now. And speak through me. 
as I open your words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And let the church say amen. God's GPS. God's GPS. We live in a dynamic and rapidly changing world. Technology and more recently AI or artificial intelligence is transforming the way we live, the way we work, the way we do business. This was the focus of our recently held KG Vaz lecture series at Northern Caribbean University last Thursday as we look at how artificial intelligence is impacting our world. And where do we stand? And what do we do? One of the things that I want to share with you this evening is that technology is values neutral. And that is to say, it is not evil, it is not good, it is dependent on the use you make of it. Technology can be used for tremendous evil and it can be used for incredible good. A couple of years ago, some of you might be aware that we had right here in Jamaica Footprints of Hope. And through that series, we were able to baptize some eight, almost 8,000 persons across the Caribbean, across North America, and across Europe. Can I tell you that God is doing an awesome work? Can I tell you that when the Bible says that the gospel will be preached in all the world as a weakness and then shall the end come, that God has set the stage so that the gospel can be finished in a blaze of glory in a short time. Technology has set the stage for the preaching of the gospel. Right now as we speak, thousands of persons around the globe are listening to the word of God. And those who have ears to hear can hear the word of God. Are you listening to me? Soon and very soon the preaching of the gospel will be over. Soon and very soon the last sermon will be preached. But in the midst of this, I want to use this opportunity to commend our technologically savvy team that is here. Put your hands together. The, 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 the Seventh-day Adventist church is blessed with some, some fine young people. Come on, put your hands together for all our young people. My heart is warm to see them using, using their talents and their energies as they seek to do their part in carrying forward the work of God. Using technology, are you listening to me? We commend our team. We commend you. Our message tonight is titled God's GPS. GPS is an acronym for Global Positioning System. I ask Chat GPT to tell me what are the benefits of GPS, Pastor John. I ask, Pastor Stewart, uh, you know, uh, since, I, since I don't know, I have to get the expert to tell me. So I asked Chat GPT, and Chat GPT gave me seven benefits of GPS. Number one, navigation. 
GPS helps users navigate accurately, providing real-time location information and, and direction which is useful for driving, hiking, and boating. Number two, time saving. Anybody knows about this? GPS can help users find the most efficient routes, saving time by avoiding traffic congestion and getting to your destination faster. Can I tell you that this morning, I was trying to get here with Pastors Ferguson, Pastor Junior, and the Bible workers, or Bible counselors. And so the traffic was bad, so I used ways, and I put in Mona Rehab. And it took me through some routes that normally I would not drive. In fact, on Saturday, last Saturday, I, I had to come to Hope. And then I, we had an ordination service all the way down there in Falmouth. And so I could not waste any time. So I, I put in Hope Church and it took me through some routes. And then I decided to get out. And it took me through some, uh, down there on Hope Road, it took me away. But I was able to save time. The benefits of technology. The benefits of technology. And there is something else that I, I won't tell you. But there are some other benefits. There are some other benefits. So, time saving. Then safety, GPS can provide emergency services with precise location information in case of an accident or emergency, thereby providing quicker response time. Number four, tracking, talking about the benefits. GPS can be used to track vehicles, assets, and even uh, people providing valuable data for logistics and fleet management and personal safety. Then, number five, outdoor activities. GPS provides uh, uh, devices are essential for outdoor enthusiasts, allowing them to explore and navigate unfamiliar terrain with confidence. When I was driving, didn't know the place, but I say, if, if ways take me there, it must be right. If Google Map takes me there, it must be right. So I drove with confidence. And so far, it has not let me down. And then, of course, the next number six is geotagging. Next benefit is geotagging. GPS enables users to geotag photos, videos, and other media providing location information for memories and documentation. And the final one that AI gave me is research and expo exploration. GPS is invaluable for scientific research, environmental monitoring, and exploration, providing accurate positioning data in remote or inaccessible areas. Benefits. Helpful, valuable, necessary. And so it is good to have it. What do you say? But can I tell you something? Human intelligence is but a faint reflection of the uh, wisdom of the Almighty God. One of the characteristics of the God that I serve is that he is omniscient. He is all wise. Can I hear you say amen? Can I talk to the church tonight? Can I tell you that God is the, has the wisdom at his command. He is the one in whom all wisdom dwells. God is the all wise one. Can I hear you say amen? He is the repository of all wisdom. 
God. And not only that, but all wisdom comes from God. All wisdom comes from God. Long before GPS was invented, God provided a guide for mankind. Somebody never heard me. I said, long before GPS was invented, God provided a system for man's protection, for man's guidance. It is called the Word of God. I say, it is called the Word of God. It is called the Bible. Can somebody say amen? It is called the? It is called the? It is called the Bible, the Word of God. Psalm 109, 19 and verse 105, the Bible says, Thy word, thy word is a what? A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You follow the word of God, you are in safety. You follow God's word, you are protected. You follow God's word, it keeps you out of trouble. God's word. Is God's GPS system for mankind. Can I hear you say amen? God's word. I tell you, I, I, I learned to read from the Bible. My mother bought me a Bible. As a boy, I must have been in grade three at the time. Bought me a Bible. And one night she called me. And she said, bring your Bible. And I took my Bible. And I brought it to her. And she opened to a passage. And she said, read this passage for me. Thank God for godly mothers. Thank God for godly mothers. Can I hear you say amen? And tonight I am here because I know she is praying for me. Thank God. Um, can I tell you that not only did she teach me to read from the Bible. But in my first campaign... Many, many years ago, I had the, the privilege of baptizing her and two brothers and two sisters who are walking with Jesus. Can I talk to you tonight? The gospel that I am talking to you about tonight is a gospel that has been working for me, working in my family, working for those that I know. I am telling you not what men say. I am telling you it pays to serve my God. The best decision you can make, the best decision any young man can make, the best decision any young woman can make is to accept Jesus Christ as his or her savior and walk with him. It pays. So she said, she said, Joseph, read this passage. And I could not read it. You know, if you were where I come from in St. Elizabeth, it, you would hear them say, Elder Thomas, you don't know A from Bullfoot. <laughs> but you don't know those things in the city of Kingston. Especially around the University of the West Indies. People don't talk like that. <laughs> but, but, but I'm here to tell you, I never know a word. And she said, make sure you know this passage by tomorrow evening. Can I tell you that tomorrow evening she didn't remember? And I called her. I said, come and listen to me. Hallelujah. I said, come and listen to me. And I read for her. And can I tell you, I have been reading since that day. And every day with Jesus, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Learn to read. From the Bible. Learn to read from the Bible. And can I tell you more than that? I would sit down around that little lamp in the night. Home sweet home. You people again, you are in this city. You have electricity. And by the way, Jamaica is a good country. You know that Jamaica have electricity before many places in the world? I sat down around that little lamp, home, sweet home, read the word of God. And as a boy, 
When I read and I found out what they did to Jesus, I said, people can be so wicked. And as a child, God laid his hands on me. And out of that experience, I became a boy preacher. And thank God his hand is still on me. And by his grace, I will use every ounce of energy I have to help people to come to know it pays to serve my God. And the best friend to have is Jesus. Can I hear you say amen? God loves us. He cares about us. He's interested in us. That's why he has given to us his word. And if you want to find meaning, if you want to find purpose, spend time in the word. The Bible tells us that God cares about us. And each one of us is precious and special in his sight. Can I hear you say amen? Uh, hear what God says. And this is God's message to every person here tonight. Young and old, God has a message for you. Mark it in your Bible. Read it when you get home. Spend time. Make it be the last thing you read when you go to bed in the evening. The first thing you read when you get up in the morning. God said to you tonight, for I know the plans. Hallelujah. For I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord. Plans to what? Plans to what? To prosper you. And not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Can somebody say amen? God says I have great plans for you. Can I talk to somebody tonight? Every now and again some people cheat God out of God's plan for their lives. They reject him. They turn their backs on him. And when he wants to bless them they walk away. Hear me brothers and sisters your future begins with God. I say your future begins with God. If you want life to be meaningful, if you want God to bless you, if you want God to lead you, put your hand in the hand of God. And he will bless you. And he will make you a blessing. Can I hear you say amen? Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call at me and come and pray to me and I will what? I will what? I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, can somebody say amen tonight? God cares. God loves us. That's why he has placed it in the hearts of his children in the Hope District and the Augustown District of Churches. Lift up the trumpet. Tell some young men that there is a God who cares. Tell some young men that I want them to be saved. Tell them I have a purpose for your life. Tell some young lady they don't have to walk around and do all types of things because I am here for them. I will bless them. And I will lead them in the paths of righteousness. Can somebody say amen? Because God's thoughts are precious towards us. Because God loves us with an everlasting love. Because God wants us to live with him. Because God wants us to experience happiness. He has given to us his word as a guide for our lives. One of the most exciting things uh, I have found about the Bible, though, is that it has some, uh, well, GPS took some things from it. Every now and again, the drivers sometimes decide not to follow GPS. And make some wrong turn. And GPS is recalibrating. 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 And it shows you another way out. Can somebody talk to me tonight? Every now and again you are walking with God and you make a mistake. God does not abandon you. God says I will bring you back. I will lead you in the paths of righteousness. Can somebody say amen? God does not abandon you when you fail him. No. God is a God of love. Hallelujah. And he, he, I told you last night and you will hear it again. God is not in the condemnation business. 
God is in the salvation business. Men see how many times you fail. God sees how many times you try. Keep walking with your God. Keep walking with him. And he will bless you. The, the, the Bible tells us where we came from. I thought somebody would say amen. You are not from a one cell amoeba. You are not from any monkey. You came from the hand of God. Touch the person beside you. Tell him, you are a child of God. You came from the hand of God. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You are precious in God's sight. Come on, say amen. amen. That must put some dignity in your step. It must cause you to walk with a pep in your step. Because you're a child of God. Let the Bible speak. Let the Bible speak. Come on, say amen. amen. The Bible says in, in, in Genesis, it, we, the Bible tells us where we came from. It says, and God said, let us. Uh, I want you to talk to me, man. Uh, the Bible says, uh, God said, let us make man or mankind in our image. One of these nights, I'm going to talk to you about what the image means. Let us make man in our, in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fish of the sea. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and a female created he them. Now, 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 let me just explain something. There is no one that is created in God's image. Combination of the male and the faint female that reflects the image of God. Mm. I'm sorry to hurt some people tonight. Didn't plan it. God has some feminine qualities. I know I wouldn't hear amen for that. God is loving. God is nurturing. God is forgiving. God is caring. God is nurturing. God has some feminine qualities. God has masculine qualities. He is the defender of his people. He is the protector. He is a lion of the tribe of Judah. Can somebody say amen? God is the one who provides. So it is a combination of the male and the female. That adequately reflects the image of God. And the Bible says, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. God made man to rule over his creation. God gave man dominion. We must take care of the environment. Nurture the environment. Can I hear you say Amen. Subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that move upon the earth. The Bible says, verse 31, notice what the Bible says. And God saw everything. How many things? Everything that he had made. And behold, it was what? It was what? Not just good, but it was what? Very good. And the Bible says, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day when God made this world it was perfect no blight of sin and the divine pronouncement was 
It was very good. So you were made in God's image. Made in his likeness. Hallelujah. I love Psalm 139. Verses 13 and 14. What does it say? You form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. Come on, say amen. Can I talk to the church tonight? My brothers and sisters, you were formed not just when your mother's egg met your father's sperm. No! You were formed in God's mind long before your mother and your father met God will and purpose that you would be here and you would be under this tent tonight and you will hear his word. There is no accident with God. Sometimes there are some parents who tell their children, I never planned for you. They might not have planned, but God planned for you. You are a child of God. Can I hear you say amen? You are precious in God's sight. I say you are precious in God's sight. I say you are precious in God's sight. Can I tell you tonight? There are over 7 billion people on this earth. There is no one like you. Not one. No one like you. When God made you, he threw away the mold in which you were shaped. You are literally and figuratively one in billions. You are no accident. You are no accident. God planned for you. Come on, say amen. amen. Tell the person beside you, God planned for you. God planned for you. He planned for you. He planned for you. From your mother's womb. And because of that, because of that, the Bible says, I will praise you. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul know it quite well. Can somebody say amen? I say you are special. I say because you are special, you must praise God. He made you for a purpose. He made you for a purpose. Can I hear you say amen? My soul knows quite well. We're made in God's image. We're made for a purpose. Purpose is to glorify God. To praise God. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Why are you on this earth? To glorify God. Hear what the Bible says. Hear what the Bible says. Uh, tells us where we came from. We are here to glorify God. Let us hear the conclusion. Of the whole matter. Fear God. What should you do? Fear this fear does not mean to be afraid of. It means to show respect. Respect due. God a God. Come on say amen. God deserves our worship. Can somebody say amen? Fear God. And what? And what? Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Why? For, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Can I hear you say amen? The Bible tells us in, in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons. Bring my sons. Bring my who? Oh, brothers and sisters, God wants to save some young men tonight. God sent this tent here to save some young men from Bedward Gardens. Some young men from Goldsmith Villa. God has sent this tent here to save somebody, some young men, some young men. God wants you to serve him. He has sent this tent here to save some young ladies. Call, bring back my sons. I made them. I made them in my image. 
I made them to glorify my name. Bring them back that they may worship me. Bring them back that they may serve me. Bring them back that they may rightly represent me. Bring them back. Bring back my sons from afar. And I have a burden. I have a burden. I have a burden for young men. Not only because I have daughters, but I have a burden for young men. I have seen them destroying themselves. I have made, made it a point of my duty to, everywhere you go today, you see them rubbing up stuff in their hand mills. And I have always, I made it a part of my duty to tell them, my father did that and he's dead. I saw him smoking marijuana and tobacco and cigarette. I saw him smoking. And because of my connection to God and what God has done for me as a child, as I grew up, I said, Daddy, this thing is not good for you. And he said, Joseph, I have been smoking this before you were born. I said, it is not good. And I watched my father die from lung cancer. It ate out his lungs. Reminded me of what a young man from Westmoreland who was living in the Bahamas said. He said, when you smoke, you put fire in your head and a hole in your pocket. When you smoke, you put fire in your head and a hole in your pocket. You destroy your body. My father died from it. And even though I baptized him before he died, he still suffered. One of these nights I'm going to share with you. Walk with God. Because if you don't, you might make some mistakes from which you never recover. Even though God forgives you. It is important that you walk with God. Bring back my sons. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. Come on, say amen. amen. Everyone who is what? Called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. And have formed him. Yea, I have made him. God made you for his glory. God made you for his glory. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, he says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's why Christians can't dress anyhow. Huh? Amen. Sound weak though. That's why Christians can't eat anything. You're a child of God. <laughs> You're a child of God. You see, if you came from a one cell amoeba, if you came from a monkey or an ape, you can live like an animal. But if you came from the hand of God, you must live like a child of God. You have to live like a child of God. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Made for God's glory. The Bible tells us why we are here. We are here to glorify God. It tells us where we are going. We are going either to heaven or to hell. There is no middle ground. In John, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believe it on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And can I talk to the church tonight? This everlasting life is not just length of days, but quality of existence. I have come to recognize that when you talk about life, the normal word for life is bios. But when the Bible speaks about life and the life that is in Christ, it doesn't use that word. It uses a word called zoe. The Greek word zoe, and zoe is not just length of days, but quality of existence. Can I hear you say amen? 
The child of God has the life of God, has the purpose of God, and can walk and live and conduct himself like a child of God. Can I hear you say amen? Because you're wrapped up, the song says, wrapped up and tangled up, and tangled up in Jesus. Come on, say amen. It tells us where we are here, where we are going, where it tells us. Now, I want to share with you tonight. Of, and it shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. I want to share with you tonight something about what the Bible is intended to do for us. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And they shall come forth, they that have done good, unto what? Unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. The Bible tells us where we are going. Tells us why we are here. Why are we here? We are here to glorify God. Where are we going? I know where I am going. I say, I know where I am going. I'm going home with my Lord. Can I hear you say amen? No person who hears these messages must go to hell. And by the way, for you to go to hell, you have to fight past God. You have to fight Jesus. You have to fight the Holy Spirit. You have to fight the church. And you have to fight the preacher and the Bible workers. And you have to, you have to fight. To be lost. And all you have to do is to accept Jesus to be saved. Can I hear you say amen? <laughs> I want to share with you tonight five reasons why God gave us the Bible. Five reasons. Number one, to give us hope. <laughs> for whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Can I hear you say amen? amen? It says that you can live for hours without breath. You can live for days without food. But you cannot live for a minute without hope. Hope is essential to survival. God has given to us his word. For, to have hope. Can I tell you that outside of Jesus, the only future you have is four to six feet in the ground and hell after. Four to six feet in the ground and hell fire thereafter. But with Jesus, it is quality of existence now and a future with your Father in heaven. Let the church say amen. amen. The word of God is here to give us hope. Number two, to guide us through life. Can I hear you say amen? amen. It is here to do what? Amen. Guide us through life. Hear what the Bible says. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto that he do well that he take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Thank God for his word. Praise God for his words. What do you say? The Bible says in, in Psalm, in Psalm 119, 105, we read it earlier. It says, thy word, come on, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Can somebody say amen? The third reason why we have the Bible, it is to help us to get converted. Anybody want to be converted tonight? Anybody want to be converted tonight? It's me, Lord. It's me. It's me, Lord. It's me. It's me, Lord. I want to be converted. I don't want to be lost when you come. What do you say? So the Bible says, the Bible says, the law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is what? Converting the soul. Can somebody say amen? The testimony of the Lord is what? Sure, making wise 
the simple. The word of God is here to convert us. As you spend time in the word, as you spend time in the word, as you spend time in the word. It reminds me of the story of the little boy who decided that he wanted to watch his father. Every morning his father would get up and go in his study and he would spend time reading the Bible. And he would spend time reading the Bible. And the little boy said, Daddy, I want to follow you. And by the way, gentlemen, watch it. Your sons are following you. Mothers, watch it. Your daughters are following you. I, wa I, I, want, to I want to join you. And so the boy got up, and got up in the morning, sat beside his daddy, and reading, reading, reading. After a few days, he said, Daddy, no, it's not making any sense. It's not making any sense. I can't remember anything. It's not helping. It's not. The father said, okay, son, just continue for a little while longer. And so he continued. He said, daddy, it's not making any sense. But the father lived pretty close to a stream, and he had a basket that he used to use to measure cold. So he said, son, I want you to take this basket. We talk about this thing is not making sense. Take this basket, and I want you to go down there and fill it with water for me. And the little boy, in his childhood in innocence, did not recognize that basket cannot carry water. So he went down, and he dipped it in the stream, and ah, uh, it was empty. He went back to his father. He said, Daddy, basket cannot carry water. But by the way, there's a lesson I learned. It says, you don't have to learn from experience. You can learn from other people's experience. The other part of it says, experience is a very good teacher. The only problem is that you get the exam before you get the lesson. And, and, so, and, so, and so the little boy, the, Daddy, it cannot. And so he went to his father. It, it, it can't. Father said, yes, son, it can, but you have to move fast. You have to move fast. So he went again and he dipped. Daddy, you're tricking me. You're trick. He said, son, I said, you have to move fast. You have to move fast. And so he went and he dipped. And he went to his father. He said, daddy, 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 you know that basket can't carry water. You tricked me. You tried to trick me. But I found it out. The father said, okay, son. You said that sitting down and reading was not making any sense. He said, you remember how the basket was before you went down to the stream? He said, yes, daddy, it was black with the coal. He said, look at it now, son. How is it? He said, Daddy, it is clean. Father said, Son, that's how it is with the word of God. The more you dip in it, is the cleaner you come up. Keep dipping. Keep dipping. Keep dipping. You may not be able to see it, but it is working. The more you dip in the word, is the cleaner you become. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Uh, the, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God. Can somebody say amen? Which live it and abide it forever. And I say praise God. And then the fourth reason God has given to us. The Bible is a safeguard against sin. As a safeguard against what? A safeguard against sin. And young men, young ladies, look at this one. Uh, Psalm 119 verses 9 to 11. It says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Can somebody say amen? amen? If you want to be clean, keep dipping in the word. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart, says the scripture, have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Can somebody say amen? And verse 11, thy word have I hid in my heart. 
that I might not sin against thee. Let the church say amen. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I've had the opportunity of reading through the Bible. I told you I started way back when, way back when. And even today, every morning I get up, I read at least three chapters. I started Genesis 1, Psalm 1, and Malachi 1. And when I finish from Genesis 1, the end of Job, I go back to Genesis 1. And when I finish Psalm 1 to the end of Malachi, I go back. To Psalm 1. And I finish Matthew 1 to Revelation 22. I go back. And for years, for years, I've had the opportunity of reading through the Bible. And every day, it is bread of life. Every day, it is the bread of life. It sustains me. It keeps me. Thank God for the word. It can make a difference in your life. It can transform your life. It can make a difference in your family. Spend time in the family. Family reading the word. I wish I could tell you. My daughter is here tonight. Every morning at our worship, we spend time reading the word of God. And I thank God for the impact it has had on their lives. Each one of our four daughters requested baptism before they reached 10. And the last one was just seven. We were sitting together in the Mandela Seventh-day Adventist Church. And she said, Daddy... I want to be baptized. And I said, Joshe, why do you want to be baptized? She said, I want to be more committed to God. And can I tell you, when you place your hands in the hands of God, he takes care of you. He never fails. Never fails. We fail him. But he will not fail us. And I challenge you tonight. Feed on God's word. Let it be a daily staple in your family. And you will see that the devil has to take wings. As God covers you. As God protects you. As God delivers you. Can I hear you say amen? The word of God is powerful. The word of God is given the fifth reason to make us wise unto salvation. To make us wise unto salvation. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. True which, which, true faith which is in Christ Jesus. Let the church say amen. God's word generates life, creates faith, produces change, frightens the devil, causes miracles, heals hurts, builds character, transforms circumstances, imparts joy, overcomes adversity, defeats temptation, infuses hope, releases power, cleanses our minds, brings things into being. And guarantees our future forever. The word of God is powerful. Can I hear you say amen? It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Can I hear you say amen? The Bible is the traveler's map. It is the pilgrim's staff. It is the pilot's compass. It is the soldier's sword. And it is the Christian's charter. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be safe. And practice it to be holy. Read it slowly. Read it frequently. Read it prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. God's word is enduring. Can I hear you say amen? God's word is as enduring as God himself. 
The Bible says, God's word, the grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, but the word, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Read about Napoleon Bonaparte. They burned the Bibles in the streets of France and paraded the prostitute through the streets. Down with the Bible, up with the goddess of reason. But Napoleon is dead and the word of God is still here. God's word triumphs. Can I hear you say amen? There's power in the word. Many have tried to destroy it, but it is still here. Let the church say amen. In fact, one infidel that tried to destroy it, his house is now a printing press. Producing the word of God. Can I hear you say amen? The word is enduring as God himself. Ellen White says, if God's word were studied as it should be, men would have a breadth of mind, a nobility of character, and a stability of purpose that is really seen in these times. We need some young men who will be men of the word. Some young ladies who will be women of the word. Can I hear you say amen? By the way, not just men of the word, gentlemen of the word. Ladies of the word. Can I hear you say amen? Theodore Roosevelt said, Almost every man who has by his life work added to the sum of human achievement, of which the race is proud, of which people are proud, almost every such man has based his life work light, largely upon the teaching of God's word. If you want to make an impact for your life in God's word. Can I hear you say amen? <laughs> And I close tonight. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. All scripture. <laughs> Old Testament <laughs> and New Testament. And by the way, when Paul wrote, the only testament he had was the Old Testament. The only, Christ, the only scripture Jesus had was the Old Testament. He said, all scripture. How much of it? <laughs> How much of it? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in what? Righteousness. That the man of God, that the woman of God may be what? Perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. And the good news is that the word of God points to Jesus. All scripture points to Jesus. Jesus is the central figure. Can I hear you say amen? You see, Jesus is the living word. The Bible is the written word. Can somebody say amen? All scripture points to Jesus. And he said to us tonight, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they. Which testify of me. When we give you the Bible tonight. When we give out the Bibles in these campaigns. And we have. If you want to give. As many as we can afford. It is. Source of light. Source of life. The word of God. Somebody gives you food. It serves you for an hour. And you are hungry again. Feed on the word. And it will satisfy you for eternity. Can I hear you say amen? amen. <laughs> Sister Satchel come to sing tonight. A father was left alone with his little daughter. She was about five years of age. And so, the father wanted to read. And the little girl wanted to, to play. 
And that combination didn't work quite well. So the father came up with a beautiful idea. He got a map of the world and cut it out on the ground. Cut it out on the ground. In a very short time, the little girl called, Daddy, I am finished. And there on the ground was a perfect map of the world. How in the world did you get it so easy? She looked at the dad. She said, Daddy, on the back side of the map of the world was a picture of a big man. I put the man in his place. And when the man was in his place, the world came out all right. Is that man in his place in your life? Is he? Listen as she sings. say amen. Before you leave, Sister Sachel, I want you to sing two stanzas of that again. And tonight, I want some people to commit to reading the word, spending time in the word, make a commitment. And if you are serious about that, I want you to walk down to this altar, walk down to this altar as he sings, a commitment to spending time in the word. And for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you want to place your hand in God's hand and say, Yes, Lord, I spend time in your word. I'm going to invite Pastor Jump to come and pray a special prayer. As she said, Walk down to the altar as we pray together. Walk down to the altar and pray together. Tonight, committing ourselves to spending time in the word of God. Walk down, walk down, walk down, everybody. Walk down tonight is a call Holy to commitment words, to spend in the word. Long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with walk God's down. own heart. Oh, let the ancient words in. 
commitment. All our young people, young and old, walk out. Words of hope, they give us strength. Give us strength. And help us go. And help us go. In this world, it's a commitment to spending time in God's word. words will guide us home. Ancient words, they're ever true. Changing you. Changing me. Changing you. And they're changing you for we have come Spent with open arms Spent oh let these ancient words oh let the ancient impart. world impart. ancient words they're ever true changing. they're changing me and, changing and they're changing you yes we have come we have come with open arms oh let, oh, let these ancient words we have come. We have come with open arms and let these ancient words impart. Will you come with open arms and let these ancient words impart? Let the church say amen. I'm going to ask you something else. You are serious about spending time in God's word. At least a chapter. But each day, spend time in the word. And you say, Lord, by your grace, help me to do that. Raise your hands. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Put them down. And as Pastor John prays tonight, I wonder, is there one person here who has not yet given your heart to Christ and you want to say, please include me in that prayer? Before long, I want to give my heart to Jesus. Is there one person who is so brave and has the courage and is not ashamed of Jesus and you want to say, include me in that prayer, please. Raise your hand. Is there one? Not a shame. Not a shame. Not a shame. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Are there others? Not a shame. God bless you. God bless you. He sees those hands. And as pastor prays tonight, know that God is writing down your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Bow your heads as Pastor prays. Let us bow our heads together as we pray. Oh, Father in heaven, creator and sustainer of this vast universe, we come before you at this time, oh, Father, grateful for your mercies and your grace. Grateful, dear Father, for the fact that you have sent your word to us tonight in such a simple tone, reminding us that even though Google and Waze may have set things in place for us to have routes that we may take in challenging times and navigate around traffic, there is a God in heaven who had thought about all of our challenging moments and has been calibrating and recalibrating the road towards success and the road to hope in Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, tonight we are grateful for the fact that you, oh God, set things in motion so that on this very spot, someone can find hope, someone can find healing, someone can find a place of quiet rest not located at the bottom of a bottle or in a cigarette not located in the nightclub but it is located in Jesus Christ tonight dear father you have reminded us that you gave us your GPS the Bible the living word of God you gave us your GPS so that those who are lost can be found so that those who are empty can be filled so those who are broken can be mended those who are hopeless can find hope and those who are drunk can be made sober tonight dear father you have taught us that you can and will lift us higher than we have ever been tonight oh father tonight we thank you for your words of life Thank you for your man servant, dear God, who came to this plot of ground to lift up Jesus 
And right now, dear Father, we pray that you will continue to walk with him. That you will continue to walk with him. That you will continue to surround him with your retinue of angels every night as he navigates to this plot of ground. And otherwise, oh God, we pray that you will bless his family. We pray that you will surround him, that you will touch his lips. That every moment that he preaches, that souls will understand that there is power in the name of Jesus to break their chains tonight oh god we pray that you O oh savior divine as you continue to use him that men and women boys and girls will be unshackled oh father in heaven oh lord tonight we are praying a prayer of commitment so finally then oh lord we ask you we ask you dear father to give us Give us the discipline that we need. Yes. You know, God, truth be told, there are so many times in our existence as human beings that we are so focused on getting to school on time, well. getting to work on time, yeah. waking up early, even to go to church on time. That we forget the God who gave us school. The God who gave us the job. The God who gave us the opportunity to serve in the church. We don't listen to him and we wonder why is it that our lives are going in the wrong direction. But tonight we have come to this altar because we are saying Lord we want to make time for you. Because you made time for us when Jesus died on Calvary's cross. Oh Oh, Savior Divine, we ask you in this moment to wake us up a few minutes earlier so that we can read your words, so that we can be filled. You said in your words tonight, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Wherewithal shall a young lady find virtue? It is through your words of life. And dear Father, at this altar tonight, there are some who want to take it one step further. They are not satisfied with just saying that we want to read your words. But tonight they are saying, preacher, pray for us. Pray for me. Because this time it is personal. I want to read the word, but I want the word to read me. And to transform my life. And to get me to the place where I can enter the watery grave of baptism. We are claiming their souls for Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, tonight I pray that you will walk beside them. You will seal their decisions for time and for eternity. You will speak to their hearts. You will touch their minds. You will go before them and, un and open the way where there seems to be no way. You will bless them. You will unshackle them. You will open their Father, the windows of heaven, that they will not be able to receive the blessings that will come to them tonight. Oh, Father, I pray in a special way, finally, God, I felt impressed to pray for those who are leaving tonight, that the buses that will be driving, the cars that will be carrying your people, I pray that you will continue, dear God, to protect every single attendee tonight. And when you shall come, oh God, when you shall come, may we who are here tonight and those who are listening online, there might be somebody in the comfort of their homes or driving in their car who is observing or is watching this message online. I pray God for those who have decided to follow you online also, that you will seal them, that you will protect them, that you will create a clean heart within them. So that when you shall come, we shall all be ready to meet you in the clouds. Unite us once again. Yeah. Touch us once again. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. If you have been blessed tonight, can I hear you say hallelujah? Amen. Just raise your hands and say thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you as you go back to your seat. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. Please come early. And remember, tomorrow, please bring a friend as we come and we worship together. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jum. Thank you, those of you watching online. We appreciate your presence. Look forward to having you tomorrow night. Until then, I now turn over 
to our host. God bless you as we worship and fellowship. Safe journey home. See you tomorrow night. Indeed, indeed, amen. indeed. Amen, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> what what a, word. a word. What a word. What indeed. a word. We are grateful that you stood the, the time with us and you stayed through. So if you missed tonight, if you miss any part of the sermon, yes. if you think someone should have heard this sermon, yeah, the what link, should they do? The Ella link is you? right there. It's right the on YouTube. The link is there. Go back on YouTube, visit any of the six pages. And just send that link to somebody. Let yeah. them know. Somebody that needs God, to hear that word. Somebody <laughs> yeah. else needs to hear that word. Yes. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. And we do hope and trust that you'll come back tomorrow night. Yes. But do me a favor, please. Don't come alone. No. Bring no. someone else with you. Ensure that tomorrow night when we stand here, you can yeah. say, I have my visitors. Have a wonderful night. And remember, the keys to happiness is Jesus. Is Jesus. Amen. A life <laughs> lived for Jesus. Have a wonderful night. I will never be the same.